Today, we will be discussing the intriguing case of Cynthia George and the murder of Jeff Zack. Cynthia's story is one of a coal miner's daughter who used her beauty to rise in society, leading to an affair with a successful stockbroker named Jeff Zack. Despite promising to end their affair, Jeff became increasingly obsessed with Cynthia. In 2001, Jeff was shot and killed by a mysterious motorcycle rider, leading police on a year-long investigation that ultimately pointed to Cynthia's involvement with her new lover, John Zafino. In this video, we'll explore the evidence that led to the conviction of both John and Cynthia, as well as the surprising twist that led to Cynthia's later release due to insufficient evidence. Cynthia George, a coal miner's daughter, had a fear of poverty. She capitalized on her beauty to advance herself and her ambitions. Cynthia met Ed George in 1978 at his restaurant and bar, and they married in 1984. Together, they had five children and adopted two more, but even that wasn't enough to keep Cynthia from roaming. Jeff Zack was born in Michigan in 1957. He had been a paratrooper for a while with the Israeli army, but eventually returned to the States and became a successful stockbroker with a reputation for womanizing and breaking the law. He had enemies due to his sharp temper and had been involved in shady business dealings. He was married to Bonnie Cook, but became obsessed with Cynthia, a married woman he met at a bar. They began an adulterous affair, which was kept secret from Bonnie for years. Despite promising to end the affair, Jeff remained obsessed with Cynthia. They had recently broken up, but Jeff was determined to reconnect with her. On June 16, 2001, unbeknownst to his wife and son, Jeff left home and drove to a gas station in Akron, Ohio, where he was shot and killed by a man on a motorcycle who had been waiting for him. The killer had been involved with Cynthia George, who, although she was still married to a wealthy restaurant owner, had a new paramour named John Zafino. Police initially struggled to make progress in the case, as Cynthia had a lawyer who blocked their inquiries, and John had an alibi for the day of the murder. It took over a year for police to find solid evidence, during which time the case gained significant media attention for its ties to the rich and famous. The more investigators learned about Cynthia's adulterous relationships, the more complicated the case became. There were several suspects in Jeff Zack's murder, but little evidence linking any of them to the shooting. Cynthia had an affair with Jeff Zack for several years before meeting John Zafino in 2000. John had a violent temper and was known to drink excessively. Cynthia continued her relationship with Jeff while also seeing John. In May 2001, Cynthia asked Jeff to leave her alone, but he continued to call her and threatened her. Cynthia kept both Jeff and John on the line simultaneously, according to phone records. Jeff met another woman and went on a trip with her. He seemed to have moved on, but it would be shortly after this that he would be found dead. The investigation took a new turn when Christine Todaro, a woman who was once married to John Zafino, came forward with information. She claimed that John had told her that he had beaten up a white-haired Israeli in 2001. Then she read about the murder of Jeff Zack, who was described as a former Israeli paratrooper with silver-gray hair, and wondered if there was some connection. Further investigation revealed that John had recently purchased a motorcycle under a false name and then sold it across state lines. The bike was later linked to John's first wife's fiancé, who had taken it in exchange for child support John owed. Christine described how John had come during the night, eager to be rid of the bike, and even placed tape over the green stripes. As the investigation continued, Christine agreed to wear a recording device and tape calls made to John. Over three months, John grew increasingly paranoid, suspecting her of wearing a wire and warning her not to talk with the police. Eventually, phone records were obtained that destroyed John's alibi, and it was discovered that he had been making calls to Cynthia before and after Jeff's murder. Bank records showed that Cynthia had withdrawn $5,300 just before John had purchased the motorcycle and some helmets for that amount. The police arrested John and charged him with aggravated murder. The circumstantial evidence, including the bike and phone records, was strong enough for a case. It was later discovered that there had been a plan in place to lure Jeff to a remote area, as John had been found with an empty holster in his car at Cuyahoga Valley National Park 
and a 32 caliber pistol had been found in the nearby park. John had purchased a 32 caliber and a 357 Magnum, which took hollow point bullets similar to the one that killed Zack around the same time. In February 2003, John Zafino went on trial for the murder of Jeff Zack. The prosecution argued that John had killed Jeff because of his involvement with Cynthia George, with whom John had also been having an affair. Cynthia was brought in to testify but invoked the Fifth Amendment. The prosecution's best witness was Christine Todaro, who testified about John's response to her question about the man he'd assaulted. The jury found John guilty of aggravated murder and sentenced him to life in prison. Cynthia was suspected of being involved and was investigated, but it was not until January 2005 that she was arrested and charged with complicity and conspiracy to commit aggravated murder. Her bond was set at $10 million, and the trial attracted a lot of attention due to her high status in the community. In January 2005, Cynthia George was arrested and charged with complicity and conspiracy to commit aggravated murder. During her arraignment, her lawyer requested reduced bail, but it was denied, and prosecutors claimed they had new evidence that implicated her. They referenced a previous incident in May 2003 when John had attempted to kill Jeff and Cynthia was on the phone with him at the time. Cynthia was charged with complicity in Jeff's fatal shooting in June with phone and bank records used as evidence. At the next hearing, bail was reduced to $2 million and Cynthia was released. She entered a plea of not guilty and her movements were restricted. In November 2005, Cynthia George's trial began with her five-member defense team and was expected to last for a month. Assistant Prosecutor Michael Carroll believed that, although the case against George was circumstantial, the totality of suspicious circumstances would be convincing, even against a wealthy socialite. George was accused of being complicit in the murder of her lover, Jeff Zack, and the supposed motive was their love child. The evidence was largely the same set of records and circumstances that had convicted George's former lover, John Zafino. However, one more incriminating detail was revealed. The George family had financed John's defense. During jury selection, Cynthia brought a book to read and was described as being at ease. Cynthia's attorneys surprised everyone by announcing that they would seek a bench trial where a judge would hear the case rather than a jury. The defense team argued that there was no motive for Cynthia to be involved in the conspiracy to kill Zack. Michael Bowler, the defense attorney, argued that Cynthia had ended her relationship with Jeff and had no problem with him anymore. Assistant District Attorney Michael Carroll, on the other hand, claimed that Cynthia had a problem and needed to be rid of it. She found someone to help her do it. The breakup with Jeff had been difficult, and he would not let go. She and John had made an attempt on Jeff's life in May, which had been interrupted, and then completed it in June. Carol believed that arguments over a child lay at the heart of Cynthia's motive for wanting Jeff dead. Marianne Brewer, a former nanny in the George home, testified that Cynthia had felt trapped. They had often argued, especially over her daughter whom Jeff had fathered and whom he had threatened to take with him to Israel. Allegedly, Cynthia had claimed that she had been forced to continue seeing Jeff to keep their daughter with her. There had also been a threat that Jeff might expose their affair and publicly shame her. The prosecutor also entered two letters from Cynthia into evidence that had been sent to John in prison. The letters confirmed that she and John had been lovers and that she was still quite attached to him. She had sent him a Bible and listed for him some of the saints in the Catholic religion. She seemed undisturbed in the letters that he'd just been convicted of killing her former lover. She also wrote one especially incriminating thing. She told John to follow the attorney's instructions because, quote, we cannot make one mistake. The following day, a transcript of a phone call from John to his sister demanding money from the George family to pay for a top-rate attorney was presented. You tell them they will pay for it, he was recorded as saying. Just get the checkbook out and don't worry about it or they will lose their freedom. That was the deal. If anything happened, they would take care of it. I went through with my deal. Now it's their turn. They have no choice. 
At the end of seven days, the case went to the judge, and Cynthia was found guilty of complicity in aggravated murder. She received a sentence of 23 years to life, the same as John's. She was found innocent of the May 8th conspiracy to commit aggravated murder. Cynthia did not take the stand in her own defense, and John refused to testify, although he had told his sister that he'd been offered a deal if he would implicate Cynthia George. Before she was led to jail, Cynthia insisted, I didn't do it. Cynthia claimed that Jeff Zack, with whom she was having an affair, threatened her in 1998 and forced her to continue the relationship. She claimed that he even threatened to hurt her children if she did not cooperate. Cynthia claimed she had wanted to testify during her trial, but two of her attorneys had insisted she not take the stand. Cynthia George hired new attorneys, who filed an appeal claiming that the previous attorneys had a conflict of interest in her case. However, the issue became irrelevant when the 9th Ohio District Court of Appeals reversed Cynthia's conviction due to insufficient evidence on March 22, 2007. The Ohio Supreme Court upheld the decision on August 30, 2007, declaring Cynthia not guilty and protected from any future attempts to try her for the murder. Cynthia released a statement expressing relief and happiness, but Jeff's family believed that justice was not served. Do you think that justice was served in this case? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Also, consider giving this video a like if you liked it. That really helps with the algorithm. Additionally, consider subscribing to the channel for more true crime. Till next time, signing off. This has been Christina.